Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Trade Station Masterclass. My name is Jesus Nava. I'm the Director of Client Training and Education for uh, Trade Station Securities. And it's a pleasure to be talking about Trade Station, its technology, its platforms. So hopefully you can walk away with something beneficial in this class. Today, we're going to talk about using technical studies instead of radar screen. Um, so we're going to look at that side of Trade Station that sets radar screen apart from any other quotes window out there. And uh, some of the things that you have to think about uh, when you're using it, uh, that'll make it you know, easier for you to understand what's going on, okay? So before we jump into today's topic, here are some important disclosures. Uh, keep in mind that every symbol and idea that I talk about is for educational purposes only. It is not a recommendation of trade station. Also that active trading is not suitable for everyone. Past historical performance is no guarantee of future results. And for anybody that needs a little bit of um, details on these disclosures, we have the link right there, www.tradestation.com forward slash important dash information. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, oh, by the way, I, you know, I just realized that I didn't uh, send out the schedule for this week in the masterclass. So let me do that while we speak, okay? So everybody is aware of what's happening this week. So I apologize for that. Now, usually in the morning, I have a whole <laughs> list of things that I need to do and you know, sending the schedule is one of those. So let me do that. I think that'll be easy to do. And that way I won't forget after the class. So here it is. I'll bring this down so that I can see the button. And there we go. So we are going to be talking about, let me see if I can bring up the master class here. Hello, hello. All right, so this is the landing page. So we are going to, today it's using technical studies and radar screen. A topic that we've done in the past, but I think it's always good to refresh and be aware of uh, the functionality. You know, it's hard just to keep track and just to learn everything that there is to learn about Trade Station. Tomorrow we have Ask the Experts. And after that, we have David Russell with his Market Insights. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about running strategies on price based charting. You know, most of the time we run strategies on time based or tick based charts, but um, Running strategies on price-based charting brings its um, limitations and its own characteristics. So it's important that we understand how the strategy behaves on price-based charts. And that's why we have a session on Wednesday on that. On Thursday, we have John Brook at 1130. And on Friday, we do have asked the experts one more time. And we're doing another platform essentials class on how to place trades using web trading. All right, guys. So that's our masterclass for this week. Still working on the schedule for next. So hopefully we'll get that cleared out. All right, guys. So let's talk about radar screen and let's pull it up right here on the screen. Apps, radar screen. Okay, let me push it here and uh, use up all my desktop space. All right. Uh, the first thing that I want to show you guys, I mean, this is not, we're going to assume that everyone here has a basic understanding of the radar screen window, but the radar screen window is much more than just the regular quotes. Uh, we know that radar screen um, looks like a, any normal quotes and you put in a symbol and the data loads up something really straightforward and something that we don't think about much because once you pull up a, a symbol in there, it just goes to the trade station data server and it pulls data for you um, automatically. So all this data that you see here is what's considered quote data. But in addition, to, in addition to being a window that provides quotes, the radar screen application is capable of displaying technical indicators. So everything that you would usually find inside of a chart analysis, you find inside of radar screen. Uh, for some people, that's very eye-opening because the ability for you to bring in your technical studies into a table format or a spreadsheet, I think it's very useful because you're not only limited 
to seeing one symbol and that technical idea represented for one symbol, you can pretty much have that technical idea calculated over a whole collection of symbols. Um, I haven't checked recently, but um, there is a limitation to the number of symbols that you can follow uh, with a technical studies. I believe that number is 1000. Um, I don't think it's been you know, updated recently. So if you get to a point that you're using radar screen and you reach that maximum, I, I believe there's an error message that's kind of clear as to what is the problem. I think the error will say something like you've exceeded the number of historical requests or something to that effect, uh, letting you know that, oh, you're way, using way too many symbols. And for some people here that are trading stocks, that may be challenging because we have, you know, I think there's over 10,000 different stocks that you can trade inside of TradeStation. And being limited to 1,000, you know, you may see some problems there. However, and this is something that I've said in many of my other classes, we have other scanning tools like the scanner and, um, and also hot lists that will help you narrow down the universe of symbols to something that you can manage. So we don't want you to put 10,000 symbols into radar screen because first of all, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so you're limited to 1,000. And second, because who can watch you know, 10,000 symbols in real time at once? So we want you to be a little bit more selective as to the symbols that you're going to be watching. So there are certain characteristics that probably are going to refine that universe of symbols for you. So you have uh, you know, a price profile. You know, sometimes you, I mean, it's, it's interesting to look at stocks that have a very high price, but what are the probabilities of us trading those shares with the account size that we have, you know, and, and it's, it's, I mean, if you have a, an account that only has $2,000 in it, and you're tracking the price of Amazon, which is over $3,000, then, you know, it's like, well, you can't even, you cannot even buy one share of Amazon if you have a $2,000 account with TradeStation, but it's, you know, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm rambling a little bit here, but I want, I want you to understand what are the capabilities of radar screen. And that's a limitation that you're going to reach if you're trying to, you know, rank and filter the universe of symbols. For somebody that's a futures trader or a, um, an options trader, it may not be that important because if you're a futures trader, then you can pretty much, you know, track all the futures contracts in one radar screen and still have enough space to do other things. There's, there's not that many products in the futures world, that many instruments that you can trade. Uh, there are a lot of instruments you can trade, but not as many as you find in the stock world. So I wanted to you know, point out those differences right here in, in this class. Uh, Jim is asking, does the 1000 limit total for all radar screens open in all workspaces? And the answer to that is yes. It applies across the whole TradeStation platform. So if you already have 1,000 symbols in one radar screen and you think, well, let me just open up a different one, thinking that you'll have another 1,000, no, it doesn't work that way in TradeStation. So it kind of knows how many historical requests are you making across the whole TradeStation platform. It doesn't, it doesn't look at it as a per uh, radar screen. It looks at the whole platform. So it, it knows that you've already reached the maximum and uh, it'll tell you the same thing on an additional radar screen. So yeah, um, sometimes it may feel like a little bit limiting considering, as I said before, that we have over 10,000 symbols that you can trade. But again, use the other TradeStation applications to narrow your universe of symbols to something that is more manageable. Um, even different desktops, yeah. This is the whole TradeStation platform, even different desktops. It won't really, it won't really increase the limitation. And I think it's, um, so once you make a historical request, then um, you can have multiple technical indicators and it won't you know, create another limitation. And I'll give you an example. Let's say that I have Microsoft in here and I add multiple technical indicators like the MACD, the Bollinger Band and the RSI, all calculating on Microsoft. The fact that I have three technical indicators on it doesn't mean that I'm making three individual historical requests. The historical request is still one. 
because I've already downloaded Microsoft into my application. Uh, so adding technical indicators to this specific historical request does not, you know, does not hinder you, or does not hinder the limitation. And, and what I'm trying to say is you can, that would be considered just one single historical request and um, it doesn't count as three. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but um, not many people, you know, have that issue. Not many people reach the maximum. I suppose it'll be an issue if you start creating workspaces and uh, have a lot of symbols to track. You know, I, I, I see it. I see it would be a problem if um, because I, I kind of ran into that problem when I was building a set of workspaces that followed um, industry sectors. So I wanted to follow industry sectors, and I found that. I found out that if I wanted to, you know, dump all the pharmaceuticals, let's say, for example, stocks into an industry sector inside of radar screen, it was, you know, it was difficult to, to do so because if you wanted all the pharmaceuticals to be in one radar screen and then all the technology stocks in another, you know, that pretty much, that's, that's a lot of symbols to support. So what I did, what I had to do in that sense of, uh, you know, monitoring industry sectors, I had to decide how many symbols do I want it from each one of these sectors because I couldn't have them all. So um, if, it, if it was the top 20, maybe, uh, since there are you know, 10 main categories or I think there's main 10 main industry sectors, uh, of course there's sub sectors after that, but there's, I believe there's 10 main industry sectors that you follow. And if you follow the top, 20 stocks based on, um, I'd say, let's say price movement or volume, then you're onto something. You're the, you can watch the most active or the top 20 most active stocks for each one of these industry sectors and have something that is valuable, okay? So that's, um, that's my experience with Radar Screen and how I came across, you know, having to decide, okay, what are the symbols that I'm going to watch? So, uh, things to think about, right? So let's talk about technical indicators and how they populate right here inside of radar screen. Let me go ahead and add the NASDAQ 100. All right, this interval, this interval column is a column that is default in radar screen, but it only applies to technical studies. So if you have all the default columns inside of radar screen, and you're getting last and a change, you know, bid and ask volume. All these do not use the interval. Interval only applies if you're bringing in technical studies that require historical data in their calculation. How do we know that a technical study or a column requires history? Well, when you go to the add study dialog, I'm just going to click here on the plus just to bring up the, the the add study dialog. So this is going to be the list of studies that you can you know, pull in into uh, a radar screen window. And I, what I wanted to point out is that there is a column here that is uh, called history. And some of the studies have a check mark, some of them don't. The ones that have a check mark are the ones that use historical data. So this history columns, that, that's what it means. It has to download historical data because it's necessary for that study to perform its calculation. It relies on historical data. And if it's using historical data, it has to use some sort of uh, time frame in order to calculate. This is where the interval column comes into play. Only when you're using a technical study that has a check mark. So if you, if you look at, for example, something like last, I'm just gonna go here to last, you can see that last doesn't have a check mark for history. And I'm sure that none of the ones that are displayed right there at the top will use history. So let me use something that does have history, for example. Um, let's look at something simple. Moving average one line, it has a check mark. I'm going to add it and I'm going to move it down. All right, you can see that um, it provides me a value. Before we used to have an indication right here at the top 
color-wise that would tell you if the column requires historical data or not. And I think that's a style that you can check in the preferences of radar screen. I'm gonna go here to settings and preferences just to double check. Let me go here, let me put my glasses on so that I can see what's displayed. <laughs> Maybe it's not here, it's not in preferences, it's actually on the page. So settings, page, and it'll be in the color. Yeah, I think it's the color because there are there is a, a property name here. here. Here we go, headings with history. Everybody sees that? Property name, headings with history. So any column that uses historical data will be colored differently. If I want to make those um, white so they stand out a little bit more uh, and click OK, well, that wasn't a very good change, right? <laughs> let, me make, uh, let me make them you know, appear as blue over black. I uh, wonder why this is not taken. Let's go here to settings page, headings with history, headings huh, may apply to all pages and see if that works. It's not taking on the color. Maybe it was broken. That could be, the, that could be it. You know, a lot of times we find bugs here in, in the class when we're trying to do things that are not, you know, things that people do on, on a regular basis. But this should actually change the header of any study that uses historical data. So this is the regular headings. This is headings for history or headings with history. Let me see if I find anything else here that would allow me to change the color of that. Hmm, not really. And it doesn't really show here in the preview either. What if we change the background color? Click okay, no? Hmm. No, it shouldn't, yeah, it doesn't change the data. The color in the data is pretty much controlled by the indicator. Um, the color here at the top should change. I mean, you have full control over what those uh, column headers should look like. So if you go here to page, let me show, let me change the headings one and see if that, no, if I change the headings, see how everything changes here to blue, but it, it, show, it does it across the board for, for everything, not only the ones that use historical data, but also the ones that are just straight quotes. So the feature's broken. Let me set it back to what it was so that it doesn't stand out. But I wanted to show you that there's a way for you to, <laughs> to make these stand out so you know that this column uses historical data. Moving average one line, we know that it uses historical data because there's no way that a moving average can be calculated unless you can reference historical data. And um, there are some you know, technical studies that are calculated on the server side, but um, these are not it. You know, When you're using the TradeStation desktop and you pull in a moving average one line, then you know, this is using the data on your computer to give you a calculation. And it's directly associated with the interval right here. So when I see, let me delete the label here and the index itself. When I see a value of 134.26, and I'm looking at that's the moving average for Apple, it just means that that's a nine bar average because I know that by heart, the default parameter is nine periods. So in the last nine five minute bars, my moving average shows 134. If I were to change Apple, and I can do that quickly by double clicking on Apple. Some people don't know this, but if I double click on Apple, I can change just Apple to daily and click OK. So now notice that from 134, we went to 144, which is the nine bar average on a daily time frame. So this would be considered a nine day moving average. So the historical or the calculation here is going to be directly linked to the interval. So yes, double clicking on any of the symbols allows you to change the time frame for that symbol, or you can do it all on the whole column by clicking on the column header. 
If you click on any column header just once, it'll highlight the whole column and I can go to time frame, change those to daily, and that changes the calculation of the moving average uh, for all the symbols. You can see it takes a little bit more time to display data because now all the number crunching is being done by your computer. So if you have a very sophisticated indicator that runs a lot of calculations, you can understand that it'll be, a, it'll be taxing on your computer resources. I mean, I only have 100 symbols, which are the NASDAQ 100, but can you imagine if I get closer to the 1000 symbols, all streaming in real time, tick by tick, and having a technical study running calculations tick by tick? You know, that's, that's, that's a lot of things to process. Of course, some computers are very powerful. I think I have a very powerful laptop, but um, you can understand that whatever you put into TradeStation is going to use your system resources, and you have to be aware of that. Now, this is 100 times 1. If I add another column, it's not really being counted towards the limitation of the 1,000 symbols we talked about earlier, but it is adding to the way that radar screen is using your system resources. So things to think about, you know? Let me go ahead and pause these notifications so I don't get distracted here. There we go. So um, yes, so as we said before, directly linked to a chart. So let me go here and put up a chart so we can see some differences. Chart analysis. And I'll put it right here. All right, and I'm gonna go here to time frame daily, studies, add studies. And I'm gonna put the moving average one line. All right, um, I'm gonna link the two windows together. And you can see that the 144.68 for Apple, or 144.69 changing, is the same thing as the 144.69 over here. There are some calculations that you have to be aware of that sometimes will not match exactly. Let me go ahead and see if we can bring up, let me remove all these columns. Notice how quickly I can just highlight column headers all together by clicking and dragging and press delete on the keyboard. It just uh, removes all those columns that I highlighted. A lot of times we're using an indicator that runs what's called cumulative, cumulative calculations. Let me see. If um, I can find one here, let's do a moving average. Let's do an adaptive to see if we can see a difference. Okay, that's moving average adaptive. Let me bring it in here. You know, recently TradeStation has done a very good job at keeping values consistent. I know that back in the days, you know, if, if you're not aware of this, I've been with TradeStation for over 20 years. And back in the days when you brought up an indicator instead of a chart analysis, and you try to compare the values to a radar screen, sometimes it didn't match. Some of those discrepancies have been addressed. And a lot of times when you put in an indicator on radar screen and you're, you're comparing it to something in charting, they pretty much, very, they, they pretty much match very well. Let me go here to add a study and I'm gonna do the moving average adaptive. Okay, so you can see that that matches completely 146.83, 146.83 here inside of my, my radar screen. Whenever, whenever you find something that doesn't match, you know, the culprit is going to be the amount of data. And we've, we, we, we see that many times when we create um, a custom indicator. When we create a custom indicator, we know that sometimes we have to add additional data uh, because radar screen tries to be as efficient as possible. Should have uh, gotten out of this. They're using this new software, which is, uh, let me see, can I pause this? Maybe I'll just exit. All right. So it's like a, one of those internet phone services, but if I, don't, if I don't exit, then I'll just continue to ring. 
All right, so, um, so let's see. If, um, if I do, hmm, let me see if I can give you an example so that this, this is something really important as well, because as you bring in custom studies inside of uh, your radar screen, you're gonna be faced with this. So let me go ahead and remove this adaptive indicator and I'll move it here from my chart as well. I'm gonna go here quickly to our easy language development environment because I wanna show you something really quick. Let's close out all these documents. And I'm gonna create something very simple that, um, all right, let me go here to indicator. And this will be exclamation JN. We'll call this real, real body, ABG. Okay, so real body is gonna be equal to the close minus the open. So let's put in a variable up here. All right, so, and we're gonna do the average. So real body ABG equals the average of real body for a period of 30 bars. I'm gonna hard code so it doesn't get uh, too complicated here. So we have two variables. I need to declare that second variable. For those of you that are new to easy language, I want you to, to encourage, I, I really want to encourage you to learn a little bit of easy language because it's gonna take your technical analysis and strategy development to that next level because you'll be able to customize things on the fly and make them work the way you want. A lot of times we see an indicator and we say, well, what if I, if I were to add something to it, like a moving average or switch the calculation a little bit? That's only possible with, uh, with easy language. Real body AVG, this is my second average. And I'm just going to plot one. I'm going to plot real body AVG. Okay, so that's my code. Real body is just comparing the close to the open. And, um, and then I'm just creating an average on top of that. Let me put that inside of a chart. And I'll also put it here inside of radar screens. Let me go to studies, add studies. Uh, let's go here to at JN. I think it's gonna be the same. The thing is that, oh, no, it would be more on, on areas where this is gonna be exactly the same. I wanted to use this as an example. Let me, let me put it on the screen so you can see what it looks like, real body AVG. So it's down here. We can see that it has a value right now of negative 0.04. And if I add it over here to my radar screen, it's gonna be the same. So let's see, real body AVG. I'll move it here down. So oh, we see a difference. Real body AVG for Apple, we see a positive 0 0.03. And right here showing me a negative. Let's go here to Airbnb. So the numbers are different. Everybody sees that? So I guess the, the example worked. Uh, <laughs> Real, bot, real body AVG. Uh, I think I inserted the exact same one, right? And we're looking at daily bars. All right. So I guess it's a great example of something that it's not matching. So what do we do? A lot of the times I'm going to do something here to my indicator that is going to force it to download historical data. The chart, of course, has the data already downloaded, but sometimes radar screen does not realize that it needs more historical data because what radar screen does, and let me just explain this, what radar screen does is like, it downloads the minimum it needs just to make the calculation more efficient. Now, what's the point of having to download all this historical data for each one of these symbols if you're not gonna use it? So the way that radar screen sees historical data it's just looking at it from the point, I just need to run a calculation and I'm just gonna download the bare minimum. 
to provide that calculation. But if you don't have enough data, you kind of you, you're left with this problem where you're looking at an indicator in charting that has all the historical data, and then you look at the indicator over here and it doesn't match. Okay, and I think this is all related to historical data. How do we fix it? Well, this indicator. Let me show you what this indicator has, the moving average one line, so we can compare. I'm going to right click on the column header because I'm going to make this, this uh, setting to all symbols. And I'm going to go to studies and I'm going to click on edit moving average for all symbols. And in here, in the general tab, you're going to find a checkbox that says load additional data for accumulative calculations. This is, this is only setting it to two additional bars to load. I believe because it's just a simple moving average, maybe it doesn't need that many. But the thing is that, or the thing that I wanted to highlight here is that the checkbox is checked. You want to load additional data for accumulative calculations. So let's see if that, let's see what this says right here on the indicator that we just created. Studies, edit studies, and I'm gonna go to the general tab. I'm going to see this is unchecked. I'm going to check it and I'm going to say load, I'm going to load 10. A lot of times, you know, the data that you load sometimes will not be sufficient. See, so here for Apple on a daily time frame, we're still here looking at a negative number, a negative 0 0.04. But over here on the radar screen, we have a positive 0 0.02. Let me right click here and add more data. I'm gonna go here to 200. 200 bars set to a daily time frame. Seems like it's much, but it's not really. Let's go ahead and click okay. And take a look at the value now. You see how the value updated? So it's like a, it's like a trial and error kind of thing here because I, I can't really say for sure how many bars to put in there. Let me right click, go to studies and let me see if 100 would have been sufficient. Yeah, it doesn't change the value, so I guess that's gonna be sufficient. But you guys saw that when I set it to 10 only, that wasn't even enough. And probably because this average, we hard-coded it to 30. If you guys remember, we said, I wanna create this average, but I wanna use 30 periods. So I think the minimum that it needs to download is 30. I thought it would do that automatically, but I don't know, maybe it doesn't. So let me go at least 30. And when you set it to 30, it seems to be matching pretty well. Let me just select another symbol that we haven't looked at. So let's go here to Cisco. Cisco is 0 0.01, negative 0 0.01, and is exactly the same right here. Well, radar screen is kind of rounding up as well. You see in, 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 in charting, we see additional decimal places, but um, that value is being rounded right here instead of radar screen. But that's a different, a different thing to address. But I want everybody to be, just keep in mind that some, some of these uh, discrepancies between indicators that you have in charting and indicators that you have in radar screen is all based on the amount of data that is being loaded for the calculation. Another thing that you're gonna be finding interesting when you add technical study, by the way, if you're not familiar with radar screen, what just happened here, is that I resized my radar screen enough to provide a second set of symbols. Not a second set, it's the same list of symbols, it's just that now is snaking. Now here on the left, I have symbols from one to 37, and over here I have symbols from 38 to 74. So if, you're, if you open up a radar screen and you have enough space to the right to display, a continuation of the symbols with all the columns that you have in your radar screen, then it'll do that automatically for you. That's not something that I'm enabling. That is not something that, um, and that is not, that's, that's not something that you can stop from happening. <laughs> so it's kind of built into the software. As soon as you resize your radar screen and you have enough space to display another set of columns, then it'll do that automatically for you. How do you stop it? resize the radar screen so it's not that large. That's the way that you stop the snaking, all right? I'm gonna add a, another study here. I'm gonna click on this dropdown because uh, some people don't realize that in addition to indicators, you have show me's and pain bars. If I go to the show me's, 
I'm gonna find a lot of candlestick patterns. Let me show something pretty cool. If I go to the inside bar and I add it, and I think everyone here understands what the definition of an inside bar is. We're talking about a small candle you know, from top to bottom compared to the previous one. So in an inside bar, it's pretty much small. And it has to be in between the high and the low of the previous bar. That's why it's called inside because the whole bar is contained inside of the range of the prior one. If I put that here inside of radar screen, this is what it looks like. I just have a blank column. The reason for that is because show me's and paint bars, you know, some, and, and this can be of course modified and you can, you know, you can stylize the paint bar different if you want. But a lot of the studies that you bring in will not show anything unless the conditions met. So if I scroll down, there's only one symbol here that meets the criteria. That symbol is NXP semiconductor. Let me bring up my chart one more time. That's my chart. Let me click on that symbol. And let's take a look at, let's take a look at what's happening right now. Because uh, what happened here? Is that because it's showing us, see the value that we see right here, that's another thing that we need to point out. The value that we see here, the 178.57, um, corresponds to the closing price of the bar where the show me is. I'm gonna add that show me also here inside of my chart so we can see it. Add studies, show me. I'm gonna go here to inside bar. I'm gonna make the dots a little bit bigger and click okay. So that's pointing to the prior bars, not giving you, you know, the real time display, but it's also working on the previous bar. And if everybody, if everybody sees that candle that where the circle is, you can see that it's completely inside the prior one. All right, so that's the way that show me's and paint bars sometimes work inside of radar screen. So if you add one of these technical studies inside of your radar screen, that's something that you need to be aware of. And, and you say, well, why isn't this giving me values. Why is it just blank? The reason why it's blank, it's because it only provides you a value when the condition is true. And the 178.57 may not tell you much, and it's true. I mean, the 178.57 is irrelevant to the inside, you know, bar formation. And you see the inside bar, but what, what does 178.57 have to do with it? Well, that's because a lot of these show me's and pain bars will plot or will be, let's, let's put it, will be analyzed on the close of the bar. So what you see here is actually the closing price. And let's just confirm that. I'm gonna click and hold on this candle and everybody can see the closing price right here in the data tips window. And it says exactly 178.57, which is the price that I see on that column. Um, so I'm just saying this because the behavior that you see in radar screen for a lot of these technical analysis is going to change. A couple more things. Let me remove this inside bar. Alerting. Alerting is something that has to be turned on. You know, if especially if you're going to be ranking and sorting a lot of these symbols, it's important that you turn on alerts. Otherwise, you won't be doing any scanning inside of radar screen. In this idea of the moving average one line, let me remove this indicator and this show me as well remove inside bar. Um, I'm going to turn on the alert if I wanted to filter by the moving average one line. I'm gonna right click on the header, go to studies, and I'm gonna edit the moving average for all symbols. All you need to do is come here to the alerts, enable the alert, and I'm going to do alert continuously and disable messaging and sounds. I think I talk about this in other radar screen classes. I don't do you know, pop-up messages on a radar screen list like this, especially if you're turning on the alert for more, for, for, for a substantial size, uh, you know, list of symbols. So we want to turn it more into, into a visual kind of alerts. And that's what you do when you disable messaging. I'm going to click OK. 
And then that's when my technical studies can monitor my list of symbols in real time. A lot of the technical studies inside of Trade Station has have pre-programmed alert criteria. And when you turn on the alert, like we just did, it's looking at that alert criteria and trying to give you that real-time monitoring. Whenever you want to find out what the alert criteria is, the only way that you can find it is going to easy language. So we go back to that idea, learning a little bit of easy language can help you. I'm gonna right click on the header, go to studies and give you an example. I'm gonna go here to edit easy language for moving average one line. And most of the studies inside of trade station, of course, will have this alert criteria kind of line in green, letting you know where the alert criteria is. And here is what I'm looking for. The price crosses over the average, which is, you know, a simple alert because we all understand how the average works. But for something that is a little bit more intricate, you may want to see what the details of the alert criteria are. So let's go over here to my trade station. And um, you can see that the ones that have a red marker are the ones that are triggering the alert. For example, net ease is crossing at this precise moment. You know, we were above the average yesterday not yesterday, on Friday, uh, we're below the average today. We have another one, which is PDD. You can see that we were before, uh, we were above the average and now we're below the average at this moment. A lot of people don't realize that they have a filter bar right here at the top, makes it so much easier to filter your symbols and only look at the ones that are triggering the alert. I mean, I only have a hundred symbols here in my radar screen, so it's not that difficult for me to scroll up and down. But if I had 500 or even 1,000, it would be a little bit more difficult to see the ones that are giving me an alert. So over here, we created this filter bar that, you know, this is one of those things that sets radar screen apart from a lot of other scanning tools that are currently in the industry. And I'm talking about other platforms that compare to TradeStation. Uh, here, the filter bar allows you to select any of the columns that you have in here, including technical studies like the moving average or technical studies that you create yourself. I'm going to come over here and select the moving average one line. I'm not going to filter by the value itself because that's irrelevant um, if you're looking at a whole list of symbols because there's no way to compare an average of one symbol against the average of another because that's like comparing apples to oranges, right? But I can say, give me filter by alert and only give me the ones that are true. So you can see that very quickly, I'm able to look at the NASDAQ 100 and know which symbols meet the criteria. There's only four symbols out of the 100 that are crossing the nine bar moving average as we speak. All right, so these are all the symbols. Craft is crossing as well. Notice how we were above and now we're below. It's not a very clear crossover, because we've um, crossed over that line for, I mean, multiple times since today. So if you look at over here four days ago, we crossed as well. So not a very clear crossover, but still a crossover in itself. And our radar screen is picking that up. Um, hmm. So when it comes to technical indicators in radar screen, I think it's a matter of just, uh, testing things out and looking at the criteria that is being set. Let me give you another example. I'm gonna to go to the moving average. I'm sorry, I'm gonna to go to the list of studies. Um, volume AVG is another one that has alert criteria. All right, let me remove volume here. This is volume average. Again, this is a historical type of study. It's based on the interval that you select over here. So if I, let me remove the filter and, uh, and change the interval of all symbols to five minute. So if you compare the values of the volume average, they're gonna be completely different. I removed the volume here because I wanted to give myself a little bit more space. But um, let me add it back. This is what you had volume today. So we have volume today, and we can see that volume average 
is very different. So for Apple, for example, we have the volume average at 1.2 million, but the volume today was 65 million. And that's because this 1.2 million is based on a five minute time frame, pretty much telling you that every five minutes, Apple trades a 1.2 million shares in average. But if I change the time frame to daily, you can see that the volume column here in red matches the volume today because they're both looking at the daily bar. For uh, you no know, columns that don't make sense, like this zero line, just right click, go to studies, show hide plots and uncheck the sub column that does not apply, like zero line does not apply in this type of format. Um, but here, the same thing is true. Alert criteria, I can come here and go to studies, edit volume average for all symbols, alerts, enable the alert, and not use you know, messages or pop-ups. But then this is the same. You know, How do you know the alert criteria? What is this looking for? Uh, by the way, looking at this, it hasn't triggered at all today. And, and that's very understandable because we're still, you know, a few hours since the market opened. Maybe towards the end of the day, we'll see, you know, some symbols crossing their average by the specified percentage. Uh, but if I right click and I go to studies and I go to edit easy language for volume average, as we did with the moving average, I can scroll down on this study and see that same type of label that says alert criteria that gives me details of what this is looking for. If alert enabled and T-Vol, which is trade volume, crosses over the average T-Vol times the alert factor, then alert. So it's using an alert factor, multiplying it by the volume. So these are kind of things that gives you a little bit of an understanding of what the alert criteria is. If I come over here back to trade station and the alert hasn't been triggered because if I go here, to edit the studies for all symbols, the input is looking for alert percentage to have exceeded the average by 50%. If we set it to zero, let's see what happens if we set it to zero. Zero is still not being hit at the moment. Although, yeah, zero is right here. So Volume average is 28, it hasn't reached it. So I was looking for stocks that are still, that are trading at a volume higher than its average. And none of these symbols are. So it's kind of a low volume kind of day. You know, it's already 1.20 in the afternoon. So I would have expected some symbols here given that, given the fact that we have a 700 point drop on the Dow, I would have expected, you know, some of these symbols to have more volume, right? But it's not the case. All right, but you get the idea. You know, one, one step is to enable the alert. Another step is to find out what that alert is and then understand, you know, the mechanics of radar screen in the way that it, you know, keeps track of those alerts for you, All right? Um, so that's pretty much, you know, in a nutshell, what I wanted to cover today, what are the differences of uh, a quotes window and a radar screen, uh, the capability that radar screen has in, uh, in helping you rank and filter symbols. Uh, and also, you know, this whole feature of alerting, but I think it's fascinating. And it just provides you a way of monitoring symbols in real time and getting the symbols that meet criteria, you know, in real time, tick by tick, all right? Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I want to wish everyone a wonderful afternoon and I hope that uh, I can see you next class, okay? Goodbye, everyone.